Hello, and welcome to the ACE Awards, a Bristol Community College premier event. I'm Laura Douglas, president of Bristol Community College, and I am thrilled that you could join us. You are probably a bit like me, disappointed that we cannot be together for this annual gathering. Your safety and the well being of our community has to come first. However, we are looking forward to when we can connect safely in person again. Virtual events are our new normal, and we have learned a few things along the way. I know that you are going to enjoy today's program very much. While the pandemic has affected all of us in so many ways, we are not going to let it define us or defeat us. We have had to dig deep to learn new skills. In many ways, it has made us more creative, more innovative, and more entrepreneurial. At Bristol, much of our work has been online or remote. Our classes have mostly been online, except for those that require a face-to-face -face component, such as nursing, dental hygiene, veterinary health care, medical assistant, CNA, or culinary arts. Our employees have shifted to working from their own homes and have made it work, even with kids home, running around. We have turned so many of our processes into digital ones, and so much of our outreach is now virtual. While it has been challenging, we have been able to see human resilience at its very best. We are especially proud of our students who have found a way to make learning happen. It has been interesting to watch businesses reinvent themselves for these times. We have even seen new businesses emerge in response to our new coronavirus world. It was the restaurants who put up tents and turned their parking lots into outdoor dining who have been able to survive. Retail businesses that shifted to online sales and curbside pickup. Wholesale businesses that pivoted to retail sales. Fitness and yoga studios that went to online gatherings. Physicians that shifted to telehealth. Those that are surviving have been entrepreneurial in spirit, figuring out how to do things differently and still meet the needs of their clients. We have also seen businesses that have frozen in time. They know one way and have not been able to fashion something different. Imagine if these businesses had been part of ACE, a fantastic resource to our students and the community that offers assistance in business planning for newly established businesses, existing businesses, and those interested in starting their own business. Let's hope that there is still a chance for these businesses to learn new ways and thrive like never before. This pandemic has illustrated, like never before, the importance of a fearless entrepreneurial spirit. Leading our Academic Center for Entrepreneurship, or ACE, at Bristol is the fearless Nicole Hall. Without further ado, let me introduce you to our ACE coordinator, Nicole Hall, who is also on the faculty of our Business Administration Department. Nicole? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Virtual ACE Awards. I am Nicole Hall, the coordinator of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship. I am so excited for the opportunity to connect with all of you virtually, as last year, our traditional ACE Awards was canceled due to the global pandemic. The coronavirus has taken over the world and has affected every aspect of our lives and has forced us to remain socially distant and has changed the way we do everything. The pandemic has been difficult for all, but the people that have been hit the hardest are the entrepreneurs with physical brick and mortar small businesses that have not had the resources to shift their business model or the capabilities to utilize online resources and were forced to close. I am here today to tell you to have faith. Starting over can feel defeating, yet it can be the best way to apply the knowledge you have learned in the past and reinvent yourself and or your business. You are an entrepreneur because you are resilient. You have endured the loss, but you are strong and will overcome this. Sometimes life throws us a curveball and we are forced to think outside the box, but nothing in life is worthwhile unless there is a risk involved. Opportunity should never be taken for granted. Use this unique time in history as an opportunity. What I tell all inspiring entrepreneurs is, 
entrepreneurs don't have an expiration date. There's been so many entrepreneurs that have failed multiple times, but have kept going. I believe that sometimes closing one door can lead to a new door of opportunity. So please don't stop. Keep being the strong entrepreneur that you are and have faith. Have faith for you will overcome this and continue to be strong for the Bristol community who appreciates you and who needs you now more than ever. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mohamed Kante and I am pumped to be the keynote speaker for the 2021 ACE Award. I will share a bit about my background in a little bit, but before I do that, I pray that God brings eloquence in my speech so we can establish the human connection that will help me materialize my objective for this speech, which is to inspire you to adopt the mindset of an innovation-driven entrepreneurship. See, innovation-driven entrepreneurship is something that I've learned along the way, and it's based on innovation practices and the search for a repeatable and scalable business model. I believe this mindset is an effective way to achieve your entrepreneurial dream, whether you are an entrepreneur or an aspiring one. Let me share the story of two of my ventures that helped me establish the importance of having an innovation-driven entrepreneurship mindset. When I was a student at Bristol Community College, there were very few resources that I didn't take advantage of. And I'm sure ACE would have been one of those resources if it had existed back then. So I spent about a few years at Bristol Community College. And after earning an associate degree, I transferred to Northeastern University to earn a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. At Northeastern University, I worked on a number of projects and one of my capstone projects, which is also known as a senior project, it was an electro, a robotic arm that uh, feed people with upper limb paralysis. We dearly call the project iCraft, which stands for an eye controlled robotic arm feeding technology. This was the best thing since the invention of pancake. No, I'm kidding. But maybe it's not that extravagant, but it's the project that was a true success and it was featured on national media like CNN and Fortune magazine. Can you believe it? Your boy was on CNN. After I graduated from Northeastern, so I decided, hey, you know what? Why not build on the momentum and the fame that I got from iCraft by commercializing the product? So I wasted no time in getting to work and immediately formed a team composed of Northeastern students um, and I started building the products. I figured if I could get them to focus, we should be able to launch the very first commercial version of iCraft in one semester. One year later, we were still building iCraft 2.0. At that time, I had no products revenue, and I rely on my full-time job to fund the product development. At some point, I decided to get a co-founder and to start hitting the, the pitching circuit to raise money. And I was told that I needed a, business, a bulletproof business plan, and thankfully, I wasn't my first time hearing about a business plan, so I proceeded to put the required information all together. A few weeks later, my co-founder and I were pitching in front of potential investors at different events around Boston. One thing is for sure, we didn't get an instant yes, but we didn't get a no either. Um, they were polite. So we were in a classic catch-22 uh, whereby we couldn't really make the people see our vision until we completed our product. But the investors also wouldn't give us the resources we need to complete the, our products. So unfortunately, the story of iCraft 2.0 ends there. I was primarily driven by the love of my products. In other words, my solution. See, the moral of this story is that do not take, it, don't take the build first approach. Instead, focus on turning your idea into a business model that works. What I'm saying is you should focus on the customer and their problem. If you follow this process and stay disciplined, you would end up with what I refer to as the, the mafia offer. 
I don't necessarily mean put a gun on people's head and say yes, but I'm saying an offer that your customer cannot refuse because it is too good to turn down. So in short, you should love the problem you are solving, not your solution. That's the, that's the walk away from this. What I've learned over the years is that entrepreneurship in essence is about solving problems. And if you get it right, you'll pick the right problem, create the right solution for the problem and that your customer would care about. One of the biggest trap is our own bias as entrepreneurs and our love for our solution. And we selectively, and even sometimes unconsciously choose to only pay attention to what justify building the solution we've already envisioned in our head. Shifting to a problem first mindset sounds very simple, but it isn't easy, right? So uh, that's what I did in my subsequent social venture that I call iNerd Inc. I founded iNerd Inc. on the fundamental belief that if we give children access to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that we commonly refer to as STEM, it can create an incredible opportunity for the children in the future. When I started iNerd in 2013, I decided to start with a traction first or a customer first approach. I built a compelling offer piece by piece by doing an interview of the students and the parents and the teachers that I was working with in many African countries. I started with my own home country, Mali, and I tried to understand their problem and their existing alternative as well. Once I had that down, coming up with a solution that solved that problem was much easier. In fact, I was able to launch my very first summer camp within six weeks, six months rather, of incorporating it in America. The second camp, that's when I started charging people, and they were very happy to pay because my so-called MVP, or should I say the bare minimum that I could show to prove the concepts, nailed their must-have, and then it delivers a value right out of the gate. From there, we refined the product through many, many, many customer conversation, and today, I'm glad to say that we are on track to scale by licensing the iNerd brand and its curriculum. I learned many, 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 many lessons from this uh, experience. And in addition to loving the problem instead of your solution, you should also think about creating painkillers, not vitamins. See, vitamins fall in the, uh, if you will, nice to have categories, whereas the painkillers are must have when you are in pain. Painkillers solve problems, you know, uh, and, and one of the, the, the example that I, I hear a lot is, you know, painkillers are the ones that drive more revenue and lower the current cost. On the other hand, when you look at vitamins, there is no real trigger of when you should take a vitamin, right? So vitamins are aspirational and painkillers are problem solvers, right? There is a clear trigger. I have a headache and I should take a painkiller. So let me ask you this question. Which parent is not going to act favorably to the following question? Hey, how would you like to increase your child's chance to have a more educational opportunity and not to have to spend a penny more than you already are spending today? Now that is a mafia offer. Here is what I'd like to leave you with. I believe adopting the mindset of innovation-driven entrepreneurship is the most effective way to, for you to achieve your entrepreneurial dream. You should love the problem more than your solution. You should create a painkiller, not a vitamin. And you need to put your customer at the center of your solution. And last but not least, network like a fox. That's how you will be able to engineer serendipity and become a successful entrepreneur who affect change. My goal when I started this speech was to inspire you to adopt the mindset of an innovation group and entrepreneur. And I hope I was able to do just that. You can think of me as a resource and you can find me on social media at mtkante on any social, on any platform, or you can search 
to be one of my mentees to score all right because I'm a mentor there as well. I would like to thank the ACE leadership team for giving me this opportunity and congratulations to the winner of this year's award. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome into the first virtual ACE Awards for Bristol Community College. Hopefully the last virtual ACE Awards for Bristol Community College. I'm sure we all look forward to seeing each other in person next year at this event. I am Richard Bassett. I'm the financial advisor at J. Marshall Associates. I have been part of the ACE Awards at Bristol Community College for the last four or five years now and look forward to continuing the support of this program. Uh, I'd just like to say before we get into the award winners, it's always great to see Bristol Community College in our community. They help support the community and make Fall River, Greater Fall River, a better place for us all. So thank you very much. And without further ado, let's get to the awards. So our first award winner this year is going to be the sustainability winner. And for that award, we have New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. The New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center is stationed in New Bedford. They have a strong connection to the New Bedford fishing industry, and they have four core values presenting an authentic story, celebrating diversity, fostering respect, and educating the public. Educating the public, something Bristol Community College can certainly appreciate. Because of New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center, the public understands and appreciates New Bedford's commercial fishing community. The center is a must-see attraction for visitors and uh, to the city, and all students in New Bedford through K through 12 attend the uh, center at least once in their uh, career. The center is financially stable and has a long-term facility that is adequate to the scope of its programs, including space for a library, archive, theater, classroom, galleries, as well as a commercial kitchen. So without further ado, let's put our hands together virtually and welcome the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center, this year's award winner for the Sustainability uh, Award. Hi, my name is Laura Orleans. I'm the executive director of the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center, and I'm incredibly honored to be receiving this award. Um, the Fishing Heritage Center opened its doors just shy of five years ago. Uh, sometimes it feels like it was just yesterday, but other days it <laughs> feels fully the five years. Um, I think we've accomplished a tremendous amount given our, our youth as an organization um, and uh, the number of staff, we just have two and a half people working at the Heritage Center. We really, in some ways, are an outgrowth of a project that I began back in 2003 called the Working Waterfront Festival, which was intended to bring positive attention to the commercial fishing industry. Uh, most people know New Bedford as a whaling town, if they know New Bedford at all. And while that is a, an incredibly important and rich part of our history, it's not the only story. And we felt that it was really important to bring positive attention to the fishing industry, which is an active, vibrant part of our economy. It's also a really important part of our culture. And most people that we talk to in the fishing community actually talk about it as a way of life, what they do, whether it is uh, fishing on the boats or working in the shoreside support trades. So the Fishing Heritage Center exists basically to tell the story, to preserve the history, um, to educate the public, uh, to educate the youth in the community, uh, and, and really to honor the work uh, that the people in the fishing community do and their families as well. So we do that through exhibits. We also have, uh, so we have a, a major exhibit that's um, major, <laughs> our, our central exhibit. We have changing gallery exhibits. We have a robust slate of programs. Of course, right now they're all virtual uh, as is true for most organizations. Uh, we've ha we have a growing archive, uh, which is mostly digital, although a lot of people have uh, donated uh, photographs and documents and such. Um, we're quite small physically, but we're really large, I think, in our scope of services. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun place to work. Um, I love it. And I'm really proud of what we've accomplished over the four and a half years that we've been in existence. And as I said, very honored to be receiving this award. So thank you so much. This year's Benevolent Award winner is Healthy Bites. Healthy Bites was founded in 2015 by Crystal Lister with the help and support of her husband and business partner, Jeffrey Lister. Good decision, Jeff. It all started in 2014 when Crystal was not happy with herself and wanted to make a change in her life. She began to become very involved in both physical fitness and healthy eating. The results were amazing. She lost over 40 pounds. Congratulations. Throughout the process, she also found out her passion, which was to help others through good eating and exercising. When Crystal and Jeff posted pictures of the meals they were preparing, they were getting nothing 
but a positive response from friends and family. People began asking if they would prepare meals for them. So Crystal made a few meals for people, and like a firestorm, more and more people wanted their meals. From there, Healthy Bright's meal prep was formed, and the rest was history. Let's put our hands together and welcome this year's Benevolent Award winner, Healthy Bites. Congratulations, Crystal and Jeff Lister. Hi, I'm Crystal. And I'm Jeff. Um, we just wanted to say thank you. We were excited to just be nominated and um, just wanted to say thank you for this award. A little bit about our business and how we started. Um, actually, it was my own personal journey, uh, my weight loss journey that inspired me to help other people. Um, and with that and came Healthy Bites. Um, it was just helping people at home and trying to show them how to meal prep. It became something bigger than I thought it would and actually became a business. Um, so we started in 2015. Yeah, it was five years this August, yeah. Um, yeah. It was more like I was gonna be the cook. Um, I was gonna do everything in the kitchen because I also graduated from um, Volk. I did four years of culinary too. So I always had a cooking background, um, just never too healthy, <laughs> especially being Cape Verdean. Um, so, and he was gonna be the business part of it because he's grown up in businesses all his life. He's owned a couple with his parents too. So, and that's how we started. It completely changed. And he kind of stepped back and did his own thing with real estate and kind of helped me on the side. And I kind of took over the whole business aspect of it, which worked out very well because we're very happy how that turned out. Yeah. It's not um, easy working with your significant other every day. Yeah, no. <laughs> so fast forward to um, right before Corona, it was amazing. I finally adjusted being a woman business owner and mom, wife, and it was amazing. And and then Corona hit and <laughs> here we are. And that's yeah, why. luckily for us, though, if, it, if it would have hit a year earlier, probably would have put us under. Um, luckily, we had made over that, they call it a five year hump in business. So we seems like we had just gotten over that hump. And then, I mean, it hit, but it could have been a lot worse if it was a year earlier, you know? Yeah. So, so you can never predict. And yeah. um, we're still here. We're still standing. Luckily, we can say that accepting this award healthy bites is still open and we're still running and actually this is the new year so this is where our where we do get busy and um hopefully people are getting the memo that being healthy and having that healthy lifestyle is 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 very very important especially what's going on right now um so again yeah um, thank you guys we're yeah. really excited yeah. any any award any recognition for what we're doing is 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 awesome because we always, always just, I, I came into this wanting to help people. So any way that I can reach more and more people to help is, is amazing. So thank you. Yes. Thank you guys. This year's developing winner award is Troy city brewing in 2006. Keith Cavallo started a homebrew club in Favre mass called Troy city homebrew. Since then, Keith's passions for brewing has led him to the commercial stage. In 2017, Keith teamed up with lifelong friend and local business owner, Michael Ferreira, to bring brewing back to Fall River. Located in one of Fall River's iconic textile mills, Troy City Brewing revives work ethic of Fall River's past while tapping into its future. Troy City's Brewing brews small batches of unique styled beer using only the freshest local ingredients. Their philosophy is simple. Fresh ingredients and unique recipes are the key to great craft beer. Let's put our hands together virtually as we welcome this year's developing winner, Troy City Brewing. Troy City, thanks for the recognition. Cheers. Cornerstone winner is always given to the business that has been established in the area for a long time and really shows the dedication to the local community just as Bristol Community College does. 
And that's why Bristol Community College recognizes this year's cornerstone winner, Celia's Boutique. Celia's Boutique is a mother-daughter upscale boutique in business since 2003. Celia's Boutique is the woman's ready-to-wear boutique located in the magnificent downtown district of New Bedford, Massachusetts. Celia's Boutique offers unique items from Frank Lyman Design, a world-renowned fashion designer, as well as Spartina, Kinross Cashmere, Elliot Lauren, Squalo, Cozman, Isle Apparel, and much more. Celia's Boutique offers the latest trends in women's fashion and accessories. Discover a wide range of fashion accessories such as handbags, jewelry, hats, scarves, and shoes combined with the exceptional service of their experienced team. You will find at Celia's Boutique absolutely everything your style and sizes for all women. Celia's Boutique values the relationship they create with their customers and always strives to provide a fun and enjoyable shopping experience. Let's put our virtual hands together this year as we welcome this year's Cornerstone Award winner, Celia's Boutique. Let me start by saying thank you to everybody. I am grateful to be here today and to receive this amazing award and congratulations to all of the other award winners. So my name is Cecilia Brito, founder of Celia's Boutique located in the heart of the beautiful downtown New Bedford. Celia's Boutique is a family owned women's clothing store that I have the pleasure and am blessed to work with my daughter, Tanya Alves, who is also my business partner and our store manager, Cynthia Rose. Celia's Boutique features comfy clothes with a funky twist for everyday life. We have a lovely selection of business wear as well as evening and social and special occasion attire. If you need that mother of the bride dress, whether it be long or short, we, we have all that. We do a lot of um, special ordering, so we cater to all. We also carry a unique collection of jewelry, shoes, handbags, hats, and more with our focus being on quality and style, as well as making every visit a great shopping experience. It is an honor to be recognized as an Entrepreneur of the Year Award, the Cornerstone Entrepreneur Winner of um, the Year Award. Over the years, I have learned that there are four keys to successful entrepreneurship, passion, perseverance, tenacity, and sacrifice and sacrifice, there, there's really a lot of those. Successful entrepreneurs believe in building relationships. We believe value is the key to success. Believe in the power of focus and find mentors who walk alongside. Entrepreneurship is a state of mind. Entrepreneurship is a state of controlling your own destiny. Being an entrepreneur does not come without getting beat up, and making major sacrifices. So um, please come in and visit us and enjoy a great shopping experience at Celia's Boutique. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you to everyone who contributed to this event. This production would not have been possible without the marketing and communications team at Bristol. I would like to personally thank Benjamin Gamble, the videographer for this production. Thank you to President Laura Douglas, the keynote speaker, Mohammed Conti, the award recipient announcer, Richard Bassett, and I would like to congratulate all of the award winners. The sustainability winner, the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center, the benevolent winner, Healthy Bites, the developing winner, Troy City Brewing, and finally, the cornerstone winner, Celia's Boutique. Thank you to the Bristol community for continuing to support ACE. Please follow us on Facebook at Ace Bristol CC.